Were you aware that the Persians had a reputation for using gruesome methods to discipline wrongdoers? What could have possibly driven the Persians to use such barbaric methods? So, get ready to be shocked and horrified as we take a deep dive into the most bone-chilling punishments of the Persian Empire. Seeing an opportunity to set an example, King Darius had the Persian judge Sisamnes executed when he was found guilty of taking a bribe. Darius believed that the Persian court should be completely impartial and just, and he intended to ensure that Sisamnes' successor would not repeat the same mistake. However, putting an end to Sisamnes' life was just the beginning of his punishment. Darius ordered that after Sisamnes' neck was slashed, his executioners should flay all of his flesh and turn it into strips of human leather. They were then instructed to construct a chair out of Zizamni's skin and stitch it together. The new judge would have to use a chair made from human flesh going forward, serving as a constant reminder of the consequences of corruption. To make matters worse, Zizamni's own son took his father's position as judge. Every day, he would have to sit on a chair fashioned from his own father's skin while presiding over the trials taking place in Persia. King Darius was satisfied that they finally had a judge who would remember the consequences of taking bribes. Crucifixion was not an exclusively Christian form of punishment, as it was a common practice throughout the Persian and Macedonian empires. This brutal method of execution was typically used to punish slaves, pirates, or enemies of the state. The condemned individual would be tied or nailed to a heavy wooden cross or plank, and left to suffer for days in the scorching sun without food or water, their body weight suffocating them. It was a slow and agonizing death that was meant to serve as a deterrent to others. In ancient Persia, asphyxiation by ash was a dreadful punishment reserved only for the most heinous of offenders, such as those found guilty of high treason or sins against the gods. The horror of this punishment was real. The Persians maintained a hollow tower, which was 23 meters in height and filled with rubble. Offenders were forced to climb to the top of the tower. At the top of the tower, there was a sloping platform where offenders would be thrown in after being rolled up to it. They would plummet down like a stone until reaching the core of the tower. Even if they survived the fall with broken bones, the ashes would prolong their suffering until the intended, more excruciating death was achieved. The executioners would turn the wheels, causing the ashes to be whirled around from outside the cell and forced into the inmate's nose and mouth. Eventually, the inmate would die from asphyxiation due to the ash. This method of punishment was not uncommon, as even the Bible provides examples. The Persians executed a corrupt Jewish priest at the top of a tower of ashes, leaving his loved ones unable to bury him. The Bible concludes by stating, and it was precisely what he deserved. Flaying alive, also known as flying alive, is a gruesome method of punishment where an individual's skin is stripped from their body, resembling the peeling of a potato. This punishment has been documented in numerous cultures over thousands of years, and ancient Persia was just one of many civilizations that employed this method of torture and punishment. According to Herodotus, a Greek historian, the corrupt judge Sisamnes was famously flayed alive in ancient Persia after accepting a bribe to change a verdict on a prisoner. As a result of his crime, his skin was used to cover the judge's chair, which his son eventually sat upon. This was undoubtedly a horrific experience for both of them. Valerian, the Roman emperor, suffered a gruesome death after being captured by Persian forces. While it may seem like something out of a fictional tale, the reality is even more disturbing. Valerian was forced to become the personal slave of the Persian monarch Shapur, and was humiliated in front of his soldiers with his wrists and feet bound. Shapur made a mockery of him in every possible manner, even forcing Valerian to kneel on his hands and knees before mounting his horse. Eventually, Shapur grew tired of his plaything and had Valerian covered in molten gold before being preserved in taxidermy. The skinned and straw-packed corpse of Valerian was then put on display in a Persian shrine as a gruesome symbol of wealth and power. Remember the saying, you can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar? Well, ancient Persians took this literally with the brutal execution method of scaphism, where prisoners were drowned in honey and milk and left to be devoured by insects. Plutarch, a Greek philosopher and historian, first mentioned this barbaric practice, which was used during the reign of King Artaxerxes. The story goes that a soldier named Mithridates was sentenced to scaphism after bragging about killing King Artaxerxes' brother Cyrus. 
Despite the gruesome punishment, Artaxerxes wanted to take the credit for the kill and had Mithridates executed via scaphism. Plutarch's account of scaphism is truly horrifying. The malefactor is laid on his back in one boat, which is then covered with another boat that fits exactly on top. Only the head, hands, and feet are left outside, while the rest of the body is shut up within. Food is offered, and if the prisoner refuses, they are forced to eat by pricking their eyes. After eating, the prisoner is drenched with a mixture of milk and honey, which is poured not only into their mouth, but all over their face. The face is then turned towards the sun, and the multitude of flies that swarm over it completely covers and hides it. As the prisoner eats and drinks, creeping things and vermin emerge from the excrement and rottenness and enter the body, consuming it from within. Mithridates reportedly took 17 days to die from this excruciating punishment. There's no doubt that scaphism is one of the most gruesome ways to die in history. Stoning to death is another form of punishment that has been used throughout history. Contrary to its modern connotation of being under the influence of drugs, stoning was a common method of execution in ancient times, particularly in biblical times. Many societies, including ancient Persia, used this brutal method of punishment. Typically, the criminal would be tied to a post in public, and individuals would throw stones at them until they died from blunt force trauma. This punishment was primarily reserved for thieves, adulterers, and blasphemers. Late-era Persia imposed shocking penalties on thieves, with one punishment being to divide the offender in two. If caught stealing from or harassing a rider on the empire's highways, the perpetrator would have their body split in two as punishment. Executioners would draw the tops of two trees as close together as possible and rope them together, before binding the offender's legs to the treetops. Once the rope holding the trees together was severed, the force of the trees springing back upright would split the offender's body in two. The torn body would dangle from the branches, and the corpse left hanging over the roadway at the spot where the offense had occurred, serving as a sobering lesson to anyone traveling through the area about the consequences of a thief's actions. Zoroastrianism is one of the world's oldest known religions, with origins dating back to ancient times. The priests of Zoroastrianism, known as Magi, integrated into Persian society after the conquest by Cyrus the Great in 5 BC. However, their integration was not without controversy. After the death of Cyrus' son, the alleged imposter Magi seized control of Persia, but their reign was short-lived as Darius I overthrew the new king and massacred the Magi. It's possible that Darius fabricated the story of the Magi imposter to justify his actions. To ensure the Magi's eradication, Darius introduced the annual festival of Magophonia. During the festival, Persians would celebrate the massacre of the Magi by hunting down and killing any Magi they found outside without fear of retribution. The Magophonia festival remains a dark chapter in Persian history, demonstrating the brutality of power struggles in ancient times. The Persian Empire's use of extreme and brutal punishments may seem barbaric to us today, but it was reality of their time. While we may never fully understand the rationale behind these gruesome methods, they serve as a reminder of the importance of justice and the consequences that come with breaking the law. As we look back on the most terrifying punishments of the Persian Empire, we can learn from their mistakes and strive for a more humane and just society.